All right, you're watching DefenseReview.com. I'm here with my friend, Dave Pavlik, of New Defiant Arsenal of Democracy. And uh, he's going to show us this very cool SBR PDW that they've developed for the SURG or SURGE program, <laughs> whatever it's called. Anyway, so uh, take us through it. So whichever way you pronounce it, it stands for Suppressed Upper Receiver Group. It was a program put out by the, the certain elements of the military a little over a year ago. And um, it was in 556. We had originally started experimenting with something like that before that solicitation in 300 blackout. We adapted it for 556 for that testing. And then after that program was dropped, we went back to 300 blackout. We, we found that 300 blackout had better terminal ballistics in a short barrel rifle, which is what it was designed for. And uh, it was far quieter in the suppressor design we could work with in about the same size package and weight. And this one um, was actually set up. This can we run off of a three lug. Some people go off of a uh, direct thread setup. This one, you just have to push, give it a quarter turn twist. And the spring will actually remove it from there. And then that's our actual suppressor itself. And you can see where the three lug mount actually pokes through there. Yeah. So the actual barrel itself here is eight inches. The can is probably with about 8.5 with this adapter on it. This piece on the end here is just high heat silicone, high heat resistant silicone, much like these Magpul panels we have here. Because obviously when you fire this in fully automatic mode, you can generate a good amount of heat. What we found in testing with the 556 was 556 gets much hotter in full auto and semi-auto than 300 blackout, especially subsonic 300 blackout. Right, what if you're running supersonic? What's the Supersonics still burn less hot than full power 556. It's just a, a lower pressure round in general, so. And then you've got your all your ambi controls that you? We have our ambi controls. Uh, the, so this one has our ambi mag release. We are running, we have not yet adapted our F117 selector to fully automatic. So right now we have a Knight's Armament style fully automatic selector switch. All right, and then you've got, obviously, you've got the buttstock here. Got so buttstock. this buttstock, we had obviously developed our own a long time ago. This one is something that some of those folks are a little more familiar with. It came off of the HK416 Charlie program, 416C. It was their answer to a PDW. They ended up dropping that program themselves, but it does work very well. It is uh, lightweight, and, and uh, we have found it to be fairly reliable in both sub and super mode, the way we have this thing configured, so. We, collapse it real quick, I just want to see. Yep, yeah, so the, you can collapse it, you just hit this one piece right there, and mm -hmm. what we found most effective is you just push it into your shoulder and you can collapse it fully. Right, and you're running a very specific type of scope and reticle here? We are, so for this, because it's a 300 blackout, we're running a loopholed one and a half to five power 300 blackout specific scope. The reticle in it is their 300 blackout reticle. It's a BDC reticle with one side being the supersonic, the other side being the subsonic. As long as you uh, maintain the load, they actually set up. So 110s for supers, 220s for subs. And they're supposed to be accurate on the super side to 600 yards, sub side 400 yards. You We've got tested a, it you out. Got a, a rabbit in there? For, We've right. got a rabbit on the one side. That's, that's how you know, because rabbits are fast. And you've got a tortoise on the other side, and tortoise are slow. And we've tested it out to a few hundred meters, and we found the BDC to be pretty spot on. So it's pretty cool. And we have it mounted in this uh, Kinetic Development Group side lock mount. Cool thing about that is it is quick release, but the way they designed it, it clamps on the same time every single time. It has just the right amount of tension based on the, the side of the receiver and the, and the rails that you have on there. You just push on the lever here. It's kind of similar to a Glock safety. You depress that all the way and you rotate it off and it comes straight off. And if you were to put it back on, it should return to zero. And we've had pretty good luck with this and with some of our CCOs. This is a side lock mount in yeah, a T1 see. micro. Yeah. And you just have that depressed there. You know that it's fully seated once you have it lined up. You 
push it over to the side and you saw that just pushed out. And yeah, do that one more time. Let me just... You have to push all the way in the middle. You can't just push on the side there. You have to push it all the way in the middle there, but right. you push that, you get it all the way off. And then that lug interacts with one of the pick rails. And then you roll it off to the side and it'll actually engage. So you push it all the way in, roll it off. When it's good to go, it seats, pushes out, and it's rock solid. There's no wibble, wiggle or wobble there. It's just solid in there. No back and forth. It fits Very about cool. as tight as you can get. So what's the, uh, the outside range of this gun? So the outside range is as far as you can effectively push it. There have been plenty of arguments on how far you can push 300 blackout. We've seen shooters push supersonic 300 black rounds from 120 to 130 OTM to 147, 150 grain. Supersonic rounds out to seven, 800 meters. We've seen subs go further out than 400 meters. And again, it's like you're lobbing a mortar, but it's a 220 grain mortar, so it still right. has a, a good amount of ballistic effectiveness once it hits its target, as long as you can predict the arc. That's where that scope comes in. That ballistic reticle does a pretty good job of predicting that, uh, that arc of that round, so. Very cool, and uh, guys can buy, I mean, this is available already to military if they, if they want it. So, again, we went back to, away from the 5.56 and went to 300 blackout. We think there are some units that find 300 blackout a little more appealing operationally and already use it operationally. So this was kind of our answer for that. This is something we're considering offering to uh, the civilian market. Obviously, it'd be in a semi-automatic version, not a fully automatic version, right. but uh, you and I talked about... You need a tax stamp. The, we talked about you need a tax stamp now, maybe one tax stamp. However, there might be the, uh, the Hearing Protection Act coming out pretty soon, which we hope with the current president, would uh, yes. eliminate that, that $200 tax stamp and make something like this available. Boy, would that be nice. As, as simply as buying a pistol or a rifle. That so. would be nice, wouldn't it? Let's hope. So, all right, very cool, David. And what was this going to go for, roughly, uh, this type of package? We were just looking at packaging the upper receiver, but the upper receiver would be somewhere around the $2,000 range because we're looking at a suppressor, a complete upper, and we are using some slightly different components. The actual gas adjustment is built into the carrier itself, not in the gas block like our normal 8016s. So there are a few other components we've got to bring in here to, in order to make this be exactly what it is, a streamlined that it is. But we're looking somewhere around the $2,000 range. I forgot this is your own BCG as well, right? Bulk carrier group. The BCG is actually, it's actually OEM from another manufacturer. Oh, okay. But uh, there, so there are a couple other components that we brought from, from outside, from Knight's Armament, okay. from uh, PWS, and a couple other uh, manufacturers. Just a curiosity, uh, what brand sites are you running on this thing right now? These irons are from Knight's Armament. We love Knight's, love the Knight's family. And these sights are already found on the Mark 18 series of rifles. So we thought they'd be pretty fitting and pretty familiar to the folks who'd be testing it. And obviously we've got M-Lock on here, a full M-Lock rail. We do run M-Lock. We had a key mod version. We just think M-Lock is kind of becoming a little more and more popular as both of them have had a chance to fully shake out. Yeah. And so we're gonna be offering, we're gonna be offering both options in our rail systems but from what we've seen, M-Lock has been just a little more popular. Personally, just my personal preference, I'd like to see a little, maybe a little stubby. For I like if it were me, I'd be, I'd be running a little stubby, stubby grip. grip on it, a little stubby vertical foregrip. But uh, that's just my little personal thing there. Well, they're all made up to. But you, you to wanted M-Lock. this to be as slick as possible. We wanted it to be as slick as possible, not just for the for the aerodynamic use, but uh, that's just what we've seen from from our end users. They're they're really going into hand stops, and in some cases, not even hand stops right. or bumps. To, to grip the rifle, so yeah, following the trends of the All end right. user. All right, Dave, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. You are watching DefenseReview.com. And by the way, I should just quickly mention we are in a very nice uh, hotel suite, the penthouse, actually, as it, as it happens, because that's how Dave rolls. The end of shot. Penthouse. End of shot penthouse, sort of. So this is uh, kind of a nice, uh, very nice digs here. Uh, and it's Saturday, so shot show's over, and it's a nice way to end the week. And uh, so thanks a lot, Dave. Really appreciate it. Thank you. You are watching DefenseReview.com.